So today I want to talk about helping your IT team when things go wrong with technology. Now, technology is not infallible, things will go wrong. So it's very important that you have a process in place in advance. And this is more, I'm not talking here today about a uh, recovery plan, I'm talking about a, a psychological plan in your head about how you're going to deal with emergencies. Because especially if you're intimidated slightly by tech, it can be very frustrating when you're not quite sure what the next step should be. So let's just explore that. So the first thing is when, when you identify an issue, it's, it's very easy, depending on your management style, of course, to kind of come down on IT and screaming and shouting, but that necessarily isn't going to motivate techie people. A much calmer approach will generally get you further, but you do need to be clear that the problem is urgent. I know it seems ridiculous, but often we get support requests come through, right? I, when I look at my help desk, and it's not obvious that it's an urgent problem impacting on somebody's work. So everybody should do this. When you have a problem, say to people, this is causing me a problem with X, I need it fixed by Y, because that helps people plan out what they're doing. When you're communicating with techie people about what the problem is, try and separate out the speculation from the information. So it's good to say both, but what's really good to say is in the subject, make sure you're clear about what the problem is and if it's urgent, put urgent. Don't always write urgent if it's not urgent, but then, then describe the symptoms. Don't go to the doctor and say, oh, I've got whatever medical disease. Describe the symptoms, let the IT person draw their own conclusions because you or they might be wrong. Make sure that then if you want to speculate what you think the cause is and how to fix it, you do that lower down. That way the person will read what the problem is, they'll think about what the solution might be, they'll read your comments and go, yes, that makes sense, or no, that's not where the problem lies. Wasting a lot of time trying to fix the wrong problem. If you say, oh, I can't email, and the problem is actually that the internet doesn't work, you're causing your team to spend a lot of time in the wrong place trying to fix a problem. So don't rush to, to telling people what the fix is. If you want to find out what's happening and you're, and you're under time pressure, a simple message to say, I need a rough idea when this is gonna be resolved because blah, 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 is really helpful. Because then the person that's at the other end can figure out, oh, I need to do this because of this, this and this, because they've got lots of things going on. It's very simple to escalate minor issues and door stopping wastes a lot of your team's time. If you're constantly having your team ring up or go and see the IT guy, they're not gonna get any of their project stuff done. They're not be improving your business systems because they're constantly being disrupted and interrupted. So make sure if it's not urgent or important that the person that's dealing with it knows that. Now, if there's a major problem, what you need to do is allow the IT people to do their job, but find out if they need any help. So you can have a quick call with the senior people and say, just checking if there's anything you need from me. They'll almost certainly say no, but they might say, yes, can you tell everybody this? Or can we send out a notification about this? Or I'd like you to review this, or we need to buy this, whatever. The point is trying not to get, get in the way, but try and get them to regularly feedback to you. And good IT people will do this anyway. They'll feedback to you at a time scale what the updates are. And obviously sometimes things take longer, they haven't figured out the problem, it's complicated. They might want to put in additional resources. You can offer that as a possible help. But don't do what I saw recently, somebody say, oh, Oh, well, if they can't fix it, we'll get in another IT company. I'm like, well, that, that's not helpful. It could be phrased the same thing. It's like, do you need some additional help to get this issue resolved? Rather than basically saying you're incompetent, which is not helping and they're not motivating people. Lessons learned report. This is super important. So when the problem is resolved and whatever, you need to get a lessons learned report. Now, if you let the techie people do this, you'll get a technical response. And that's not what we're after. What we want to know is what systems, processes and change can we put in place to prevent this issue happening again. Now, IT people will automatically move to buying something, almost certainly. So take a step back, it's like, okay, so is there a process that we can document that will help us resolve this issue if it happens again sooner? Is there a skill that we're missing in the team that we could bring in an outside consultant or train somebody up on that will stop this problem happening, taking so long to resolve? Is it a one-off thing? Is it something where we are underspending and that's what caused the issue? Did the IT team tell you repeatedly this was gonna happen, but you ignored them or more likely didn't understand what they were saying? The lessons learned report is very important that it holistically looks at uh, the process for dealing with the problem, the technology and the people involved. And if you don't look at all three of those things, the lesson learned report is useless. And it's not like a massive 50 page document, it's literally a paragraph. And that needs to go somewhere 
in your document management system so people can find you in the future. So if somebody new comes to the organisation, they can look through some of these and go, ah, I see this problem happen before and it still hasn't been fixed, it's going to happen again. And they might be in a better position to actually resolve the problem where in the past you may not have known how to do it. But if it's not documented, they won't know until they get the phone call and hey, X is broken. So very simple today, help your IT people to do a great job by not undermining them, asking for specific feedback and making sure that if there is an issue, you learn the lessons so you stop it happening again as far as possible. So that's it for me today. And whether you're using cutting edge technology or a laggard, problems still all exist. But do think about, as I've said before, the technology life cycle and making sure that you're listening to your IT people and not be too early or too late when it comes to technology because it just takes up a lot of management time. Thanks very much for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments and I'll speak to you soon. Cheers, bye-bye.